Earthen Beats. In this video, we are in the start of a new playlist, in fact, in which we are going to discuss how we can apply the derivatives of single variable functions in various different ways. So to begin this, in this first video, we're going to talk about global extrema versus local extrema. Extrema, a big part of the discussion in applying the derivative, as we'll see. So we're going to start by just considering an example here. And that is, let's consider a function f of x whose graph is shown right here in this diagram. So here's this function. And so what we'd like to discuss a little bit to get going before we formally define these things is extrema. And so extrema just means usually a biggest or smallest value of a function. And we classify them into two different categories, global or absolute extrema and local extrema. So in this picture, we can see some different things going on. We can see that we have a function that is defined over a closed interval a to d here. And it has a couple of changes in behavior across this interval. So if I was going to ask, you know, what is, what is the biggest and smallest values of this function f of x, on the interval a to d, then I would think that most of us can look at this graph and go, ah, the smallest value is right there. That's the lowest that the function gets. And the biggest that the function gets is right over there at the endpoint d. So we could certainly answer this by saying, okay, well, f of a is the smallest out of all the different output values the function obtains over this interval. And f of d would be the biggest. Right, just by looking at the picture, we can see the lowest and highest spots the function gets output wise. Now, that is really the idea behind a global or absolute maximum or minimum value as we'll see the biggest and smallest values the function obtains over some particular interval of interest. However, there's these other special spots, in particular at b comma f of b, right there, and at c comma f of c, right there. And these spots, we're referring to these as local extrema. And we may be familiar with this a little bit, but we're going to go way deeper into it. So these are both local extrema. In fact, at b comma f of b, that is actually referred to as a, right here, local maximum point. And at c comma f of c, this point right there, that is referred to as a local minimum point. And we'll see why we call them that. But you can think, if we're nearby these values of x, b and c in this case, if we're close by. Then if we're close by, we go to our graph. These are the corresponding biggest and smallest values the function obtains when we're near that location. So locally, at the local maximum, it's the biggest, and locally at the local minimum, it's the smallest. However, those in this particular situation are not the global or absolute max and min values, but we're going to see a variety of different examples for which many different things can happen. So that's just to get us going. Like, okay, these are the things that we'd like to talk about in this video. Now we define them as follows. First, global or absolute extrema. These two words are used synonymously. If we're assuming we have a function here, say f of x, and it's defined somewhere. So over some interval, um, you know, some subset of R, maybe it's all real numbers, maybe it's just a particular interval of real numbers. 
And let's assume that there's some number C that belongs to the set for which the function is defined. Then, if we have some things happen here, in particular, if the value of f of c is bigger than or equal to all other values of the function f of x in that interval, so for all x in that, that set d here, then we refer to f of c as a absolute or global maximum value. Because it's saying, right over here in this inequality, that's the biggest the function gets over the interval. But it could be that it appears or occurs at more than one location. So if the biggest output value is 7, out of all the different outputs that we get over this interval, then that's our absolute maximum value. But that output of 7 could occur at multiple locations, for instance. Now, likewise... If you have the value of the function at C is less than or equal to all other values of the function um, evaluated at X for these values of X coming from our interval of concern, then we're going to call that value an absolute minimum. Go figure, because that is the smallest the function gets over the interval of concern or the set of concern. So that's just saying, hey, where, what's the smallest value the function obtains on the interval? Now, we will see that the function doesn't necessarily even have to obtain a global max or minimum values. But if this happens, then we say they are the global maximum and minimum values correspondingly. And then whenever we talk about an absolute extreme value or a global extreme value, that's just referring to either an absolute maximum value or an absolute minimum value. So that's just like uh, saying either one, extrema or extreme values. Now compare that now with local extrema, okay? So in this case, let's let X be some number C belonging to I here, assuming I is some open interval. So it's different than the one before, right? The for the absolute extrema is just some particular uh, subset of real numbers. Here, we're talking about an open interval, i, and this number x equals c belongs to this open interval. And we're also assuming that the function itself is defined on this interval, i. Then, and we'll have to have to look at some pictures to really get an idea about this, but we say that f of c is a local maximum value if the value of the function at C, again, is bigger than or equal to all other values of the function, but now on this open interval I. So really what we're saying, if there's an interval that exists such that this is true, then we call F of C a local maximum value. And finally, if we have that the value of the function f at c is less than or equal to all of the values of the function on the open interval i, then we're going to refer to f of c as a local minimum value. So again, this is about that nearby, right? Nearby, wherever this location c is, if these things are happening, then locally it is the biggest or smallest value. So again, if I just draw a real quick picture here, to visualize this, if I have a picture that looks like so, then right there, that is what we would refer to as a local max. Now, why, based on this definition, is because if this is this number C, and I just draw an arbitrary open interval around that location C, and I go up to my graph and I look at all the values of the function in that little open interval. We can see that at x equals c, the function is the biggest that it obtains in that interval. And in this case, in that picture, it, ap it actually happens to be the absolute max as well. But really all we care about is within these little open intervals around the number, does the function obtain a maximum or minimum value when we're nearby. 
And that's what we really mean by local extrema here. You can make a similar argument for that point being a local min point, because if, again, if I draw a little open interval around it, then on that interval, that's the smallest the function gets. So that's what these definitions mean here for the local extrema parts. So far, no derivatives, but don't worry, they play a big role. So in this video, let's just take a look at a few more examples here, just so we got it down. Let's go ahead and find all global and local extrema for each of the following functions on the intervals that are given to us. So in this first example, we have the function f of x is sine x, and we're interested in the extrema for this function over the closed interval 0 to 2 pi. So to do this, let's just draw a rough sketch again, just to visualize what's going on here. And of course, the sine function looks more or less like that, right, over the interval 0 to 2 pi. These other locations here, well, right there, that's pi. Over here, that's pi over 2. And right down there, that is 3 pi over 2. So we're talking about over this closed interval, what are the global and local extrema? Well, the global max value in this case is going to be, well, sine, the biggest it gets is 1, right? E enter, ever, right? So in this case, at pi over 2, global max is 1 at the x location, x is pi over 2. That's the biggest output it obtains over this interval. The global min, or again, absolute min, whatever you want to refer to it as, is going to be, well, right down here, at negative 1. And that's going to occur at the location x is 3 pi over 2. And then we think about local extrema. Well, in fact, in this particular situation, the global extrema also happen to be local extrema. Because if I go to, say, pi over 2, and I draw an arbitrary open interval around pi over 2, and I go up to my graph, then at that location of pi over 2 comma 1, that's the biggest the function gets in that little arbitrary open interval. At 3 pi over 2, something similar can be said. Draw an arbitrary open interval around it. And on that little interval, right, the smallest that the function gets, the minimum value is negative 1. So in both of these, at x is pi over 2, is also a local max location. And at x is 3 pi over 2, also a local min situation. So we can see they can they can be simultaneously a global and a absolute or excuse me a global and a local extrema at the same time. Let's look at another example. How about now let's look at g of x is say absolute value of x for values of x in the closed interval negative one to four. So again, I'm gonna draw a graph. Okay, now eventually. We're going to figure this all out without the graphs, but that's where all our derivatives come in. We're just trying to introduce the idea in this video. So here's negative 1 for x. I know my absolute value will obtain the output of 1 there. And then let's just make some more tick marks. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And up here, 2, 3, 4. And we know at 4, the output will be 4. So we get this part of the absolute value graph that looks more or less like that. There's my g of x over this particular interval. And so in this case, we just look, okay, global max or absolute max value. That's going to be, well, the highest, the biggest the function gets over this interval is at 4, right? The output of 4, and that happens to also occur at x is 4. The global min value here is actually at 0, right? It's 0 at x is equal to 0. Those are the biggest and smallest values the function obtains over this particular interval. How about local maximum? Well, actually, in this case, 
There's none. There is no local max because no matter where I go in the x direction, no matter which x value I pick, there is no x such that if I draw an open interval around it, I obtain a maximum over that particular interval. Let's just take the endpoint 4, for instance, see why this is not a local extrema. If I go to x is 4 and I draw a little open interval around it, then at least to the left of 4, we see, okay, well, over there, the biggest that the function gets is 4. But to the right of 4, there's nothing there, right? So because there's nothing in that other location um, to the right of 4, then we can't say that that's a local extreme point, a local maximum point here, because we can't define it the way that a local extrema is defined since there's nothing to the right of four. So I should also tell you that endpoints of intervals sh should never be uh, local extrema if there's nothing else after that endpoint. So there's no local max. And is there a local min? There is. Local min would be z the point zero, zero, or zero at x equals zero. And that's because if I go to that location at x is zero, I can draw a little open interval around it. And in that interval, the function's smallest value is at zero. So there's another example. I'm going to do one more here before we end the video. And this one's a little more funky h of x. Let's say h of x is this function we're about to see in this graph below, defined for all real numbers, negative infinity to infinity. What are the global and local extreme values? Here's our function, h of x. So we can see it's piecewise defined now, so things are happening. And notice a couple things first. Over here on the left, that arrow, and over here on that right, that arrow. Those arrows are indicating that the function is going to continue to behave this way forever, right? So it's going to have output values that go to negative infinity. And so for that reason, there cannot be a global minimum. So global min value here, well, it doesn't exist. There is none because it's just going to keep going towards negative infinity in the output direction, and I could just keep finding bigger and bigger negative numbers, you know, forever. So there is no global minimum value. And then we think about global max, like how high does the function get? Well, up here, we're getting pretty close to it looks like the output value of four. But in fact, I can get arbitrarily close to this location. Think of it as like a limit. As I approach x is 3 from the right, the function is approaching 4, but we never obtain the output value there. And for that reason, there is also no global maximum value. There's none. Because I can just keep getting arbitrarily closer and closer to x is 3 from the right, and my output values are getting closer and closer to 4. So think like up here in the output direction, 3.99, 3 3.9999, 3.99999. I just keep adding 9s to the end, and I get closer and closer to 4. I never actually get to 4. And for that reason, there is no global maximum value. So here's an example for which a function doesn't have any global extrema. And so that should also tell us, hey, not all functions have global extrema, but when they do, we like to identify them. Let's talk about the local extrema. How about a local max? Now, we're looking for kind of these, these uh, top of the mountains or peak locations, but we don't see that anywhere in this graph. However, there is a special spot and that is that x is negative 2. Notice that if I draw an open interval around x is negative 2, then here's my output, right? My output is 2 at x is negative 2. And if I go to the left of negative 2, I have values right there. If I go to the right of negative 2, I have values like so. 
And as we can see, over that open interval, the function is defined has an output of 2. And that is the biggest the output gets in this arbitrary open interval around x is negative 2. So in fact, a local max value is 2 at x is negative 2 for that reason by definition. It's just that it happens to be occurring here at a discontinuity, and that indeed can happen. Now you want to compare that to the other discontinuity on the right at x is 3. Well, if I go to 3 and I play the same game, the output is also 2 there. Now if I draw a little open interval around that, and I go to my function, well over here you're thinking, okay, maybe that's again a local max, because to the left of 3, uh, that's the biggest the function gets. However, if I go to the right of 3, I'm up here, right? So there's bigger and bigger values, and there's that you know, getting close to four situation again. So at x is equal to three, it's neither a local max nor a local min for those reasons. So the question is, is there any local min? And maybe this is the most obvious of all the questions we've asked in this problem so far. Right down there, local min, all right? Again, let's just eyeball it here. You know, maybe it's about one half, let's say. Let's just say that. And so on this little open interval centered around one half, if I go to my graph down here, I can see that that is the smallest value the function obtains. And so the local min here, you know, maybe it's about, I don't know, negative 4.8. Let's just say that. Approximately, let's say, negative 4.8 at the x value of approximately one half. So that, that example had a mixture of different things going on. And that's the whole point. Many different things can happen. Just fall back to the definition of absolute or global extrema and the definition of local extrema. And we should be able to identify these things, at least in this video, graphically. But moving forward, our goal is to relate how the derivatives of functions play a role and how we can figure this out with not necessarily having any other information about the graph. So that's upcoming. But for this video, that's it. It was to introduce and compare global extrema versus local extrema. So we know what we're getting into. And next video will be where our derivatives start playing a role. So until that next video, it's Matt and Beats. See ya.